What's going on, people? Mike C-Town here with another episode of Records and Ramblings. Before we get into the records, let's do a little bit of rambling. So I don't usually do this, like announce what's playing in the background, but I'm going to do it this time. What you're hearing is Neckbeard Death Camp. Uh, you guys may have already heard about them as they're causing quite a bit of a ruckus with a lot of people. Uh, they're an explicitly anti-Nazi black metal band. They actually border more on war metal to me at times. Uh, the album's called White Nationalism is for Basement Dwelling Losers which is easily one of the funniest titles I've ever heard. But I mainly find it funny that a lot of the same kids who yap about how people who don't support NSBM are bitches and pussies or whatever because it's just lyrics, but they're the same dorks who are super pissed off about this shit. Because if they like this type of music, they can't even say that this is done poorly. So it's clearly just the lyrical content and the themes that are bothering them so much. So you guys are fucking edgy hypocrites. Um, yeah, be comfortable with that. But I think it's pretty fucking good. Make sure you guys go check it out. I'll leave a link down there. Also, for those of you that keep asking about the Out of My Element, yes, it is coming. I just kind of keep forgetting about it, but very soon. All right, let's talk about some records. The first record I'm going to show you today is Black Citadel Feudal Altar Split. This was put out on uh, Infinite Darkness. It was limited to 150 copies. This is number 146. Uh, I don't usually score these kind of things. I don't remember how I was lucky enough to grab this one. And I don't care for too many of these newer raw black metal bands. There's a few exceptions. These guys, Orgy Carrion. I do like some Obscure Tatum stuff. It just so happens that Black Citadel and Funeral Altar are two bands that I actually really do enjoy. So when I saw that they were doing a split together, I grabbed it immediately. These are both U.S. black metal bands who play like that super nasty raw black metal stuff. Uh, black Citadel is a bit more uh, straightforward black metal stuff, uh, kind of the cavernous black metal sound. Really well done though. Um, it has a nice atmosphere to it in my opinion. It doesn't come off cheesy like a lot of the newer raw black metal bands do. It takes me back to the olden days when this stuff was just the normal sound and not something new to like draw part timers in. Um, I actually may dig funeral altar a little bit more they're also raw black metal but they have this almost punk sound that kind of creeps into their music sometimes uh really nasty sounding stuff that i actually do enjoy i have a copy of black citadel's other record but i do not have a copy of the other funeral altar record so if anybody has it and they want to get rid of it let me know and speaking of the most cult of all black metal uh yeah death heaven new bermuda Obviously, that was a joke, but I don't hate this record. Uh, I don't love it either. I definitely don't like it as much as Sunbather or the newest album. Uh, I think the problem with this record is they were fed up with people talking shit about them being soft. So they tried to make a heavier record. And some of it works. And in my opinion, um, some of it just plain doesn't. Uh, I got this from the homie Tim, who is uh, for the love of vinyl on IG. He has a cool little metal distro that he does out of Atlanta. Records on Black won't bother showing you that. Uh, came with this OB strip, which I think these things are fucking stupid as shit and they're a pain in the ass to get back in the sleeve. The cover of this, though, is actually really nice. It's textured. I wish I liked the album more because the cover is so nice. Uh, yeah, so when I saw Tim this last time, he actually gave me this record as well from my birthday, which was really fucking cool of him. So what this is, is this is a single with uh, two songs on, I'm sorry, three songs on it. Uh, the main one is Kamuteo and LP doing Weatherman Radio, uh, which is one of my favorite songs by them. It's a song where LP and Kamuteo kind of invade this award show, and it's dope because of the rhyme schemes here. Like, LP and Kamuteo play off each other so well on this song. Welcome to the scam, order my dudes up, we fucking usher up and piss on seats in this tour bus. Yeah, there's some really, really, really dope lines. Um, uh, we won't be credited. Most of the greatest revolutionaries of my day and age are labeled terrorists. Fucking dope shit. And then the other side is uh, Despot has two songs on here. Two old Despot songs, Homesickness and uh, Life with Snarky Parker. One song produced by Arson, who had an album on Def Jokes. And uh, Homelessness is just so dope. It's a nasty beat, and Despot is just a flow master. The other song is produced by Blockhead, which is also incredibly dope, of course, because Despot's great, Blockhead's great. So, um, yeah, great stuff. Thank you once again, Tim, if you're watching. 
Um, it also has this really cool old school Death Jux flyer that is super, super, super dope. This actually might be cooler than the fucking record, but um, anyways, I listened to this song all the fucking time, but I didn't actually have a copy of the record, so I'm stoked to have that. Despot, hurry the fuck up with your album. This is getting ridiculous. Yeah, next record I'm gonna show you. This is Imperium with Where at Night the Wood Grouse Plays. Um, this is Imperium's third album. Before this, they were kind of a doomy black metal band. I didn't really care for that stuff too much. This is the first album where they were doing full-on neo-folk. Very dark, very frail sounding stuff. Beautiful music. Records on Black won't bother showing you that. They did some albums after this one that were more of the kind of neo-folk, dark folk element, and they were actually really good, but I just haven't gotten around to buying them. But this is actually my favorite of all of their neo-folk albums. The next record I'm going to show you, this is Grand Mood with The Trench Between Black and White. So this is a U.S. black metal band with members of Cirrus and Bonal, two great bands. Um, you can kind of tell a little bit when you listen to it, uh, but it's a bit more straightforward black metal than either of those two bands that I just mentioned. Um, they only released this and a demo. Uh, the demo has not been pressed onto vinyl. Uh, I don't know the limitation of this either. It comes with these kind of cool flyers with, you know, weird ramblings. Um, this one has lyrics on it. Y'all could have put this shit on the same piece of paper though, guys. Stop wasting trees. But yeah, it's nothing super special, but I definitely like it. It's cold and it's mean, but it has a little bit of melody to it that adds a nice touch. I don't remember where I bought this, but I've definitely seen it floating around for very cheap, like between $12 and $14. So I think it's worth picking up if you're in the mood for some, some new black metal shit. We're going to try and keep it short today. So the last record I'm going to show you in this edition of Records and Ramblings is Robin Williamson and his Merry Band with American Stonehenge. Um, I am a huge fan of Incredible String Band. For those not in the know, they were an English folk band from the late 60s throughout the mid 70s. Uh, huge players in the psychedelic folk movement, the acid folk movement. Uh, not neo-folk, mind you, but more traditional folk with some psychedelic elements. Uh, they were a huge influence on a lot of the neo-folk bands that people who are into neo-folk really love. Bands like Current 93, uh, Fire and Ice, uh, Backworld, stuff like that. All those bands owe a lot to Incredible String Band. Uh, but they broke up in 1974 after putting out um, a few not-so-good albums. I think they had like some issues with each other as far as... like the direction that the band was going to go in. One guy wanted to remain folk. The other guy wanted to do more rock and roll type of stuff. Uh, Mike Herron, he went on to do some more rock sounding albums, which were not very good. But uh, Robin Williamson, he continued on the path of doing this really great folk stuff. And yeah, this is a great, great album. Uh, this could have easily fit right in with the uh, Incredible String Band discography. Uh, great playful psychedelic folk music um and if that's your bag which it should be um definitely give this a shot all right so that's it for this edition of records and ramblings hopefully you guys enjoyed it um i'll be back very soon but as usual thank you for living thank you for loving thank you for being you and i'll see you guys next time all right peace out boy